Hey group, this is how to tie up your horse here at the Buffalo Trail Scout Ranch. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to tie the knots that we use, as well as how to properly secure your horse to a fence, a post, or a tree out on trail. Now the best way to learn how to tie this knot is to do so without a horse at first. So you'll be given a cotton lead rope. At the end of this lead rope is a bull snap. And this swivels around. It is also spring loaded. So learn how to use that with one hand. Practice a few times. This is typically attached up underneath the chin to the halter on the horse whenever we want to secure them or work with our horses. So what we're going to do right now is take this bull snap and attach it to a front belt loop. This is going to simulate the horse's head as we learn how to tie this knot. Let's head outside and learn how to tie it up to the fence. All right, to tie it to a fence, I want to make sure that I'm tying as high as I can and to an upright. Go ahead and take the end of the lead rope, feed it from the right side to the left, all the way over. I want to cinch this up until I have about a foot, foot and a half of lead rope from this bull snap up here to the fence. And this represents the range of motion, the area that my horse is able to move his head around. As I tie this knot and as I tighten it down, you're going to get a little more play here in the rope. Make sure you account for that, snug it up real fast before you start. Now here on the lead line, I'm going to drop that, I'm going to focus here on this right hand line at first. Take my left hand, I want to look at the back of it, thumb down, I want to place this hand on the rope, I'm going to grip the rope, and I'm going to twist it and lock off that new loop with my right hand, just like that. Let me show you how to do that one more time. I'm going to take the left hand, thumb down, all right, palm down, put it on top of the rope, take it, twist, and lock. That's our first loop. Second step, I'm going to go ahead and grab the midsection of this leading line push it up through that new loop that we just made and I'll functionally make a second loop just like that so I can make it bigger or smaller but it's good just to kind of make them the same size third step this hand down here my right hand I've got a pinky and a couple fingers that are free I'm going to sweep down and grab that lead line that rope I'm going to let go of the hand that I was locking onto bringing the rope over to the side up and over through the second loop, effectively making a third loop. From here, I'm going to pull back on the rope that's attached to the horse, and that's going to lock off my lead rope. If I want to untie this, and this is a quick release knot, I simply pull, and it comes untied. Let's go ahead and show you that one more time, a little faster with a little less talking. Take the end of your rope, go from right to left, feed it over. Left hand over the right rope, twist it, lock it. Take your left rope up through the first loop, make it the second loop. Sweep your hand down here, grab the rope over to the side, push it through the second loop, make the third loop, pull back, your horse is tied. Whenever you're ready to untie them, just pull on your rope, untied. Alright, let's do it with the horse this time. Lead rope from right to left, feed it over, cinch it up, first loop, lock. Second loop, sweep, third loop. Pull back, your horse has less than two foot of lead rope. You're not gonna start any projects, good to go. I've got Hondo tied up to a fairly substantial branch up here. That's not always possible in the desert. Now, as long as your branch is at least as big around as your arm, that should be enough to hold them. I've also tied them way up high. Now, as long as your branch is above the level of the saddle horn, that's what we're looking for. If that saddle horn comes in contact with a branch, it's likely to break the saddle or the branch, and we don't want either of those. Now, tying them out on the limb, that's very important. You'll notice that I didn't tie them up to the trunk of a tree. We never want to tie up to the trunk of a tree. That horse might go around the tree, tie himself up, or the loop of the knot fall down to the ground. In that case, you have a horse that's tied to the ground. We don't want that either. So the horse has a little bit of room, a bit of a dip in the rope, so he can move around, get under the shade of the midday sun, but he's not gonna get up to any projects. He doesn't have enough of this hanging down where he can put his hoof over the rope either and hurt himself. That's very important. Now this bridle here, I've already taken the reins off, 
to make sure you don't get wrapped up around his legs. If I want to be there for a while, go ahead and take that bridle out, let him get comfortable. So if we're going to be there for a couple hours, it's kind of a nice thing to do. Now, one of the last things I want to mention here are the type of trees that we tie up to. Now he's currently tied to an oak tree, and that's a good tree. We have maples and willows and walnuts. These are all good trees to tie to. We want to stay away from dead trees that might actually fall on the horse, as well as sappy trees like pine trees and junipers and cedars. Those have sap on them. The sap will get on the horse or on the tack and ruin it, as well as some fairly aggressive ants that can come out and swarm. So you want to take care of your horse, stay away from the sappy trees. Well, guys, hopefully you all learned a little bit here on this video. I hope you all come out and ride with us. Please watch the rest of the videos in the series. And as always, well, until next time. Go Honda. Thank you.